In the previous video, we saw that for IIR systems, there are regions of Z for which H of Z can be evaluated, and regions for which they can't, where H of Z is the Z transform of the impulse response signal of a system. When viewing the surface of the magnitude of H of Z, I showed the regions of non-convergence as missing values and also mentioned that a more useful representation of the H of Z surface shows these missing values filled in as shown in the plot on the right. The reason it's more useful is because it's possible to see how the poles and zeros of a system influence a system's frequency response more easily with this type of view. I'll put a link to a video explaining how poles and zeros influence a system's frequency response in the description section of this post. The surface on the left, which shows the missing values, is the Z transform of the impulse response of the example system, while the surface on the right shows the surface associated with what's known as a system's transfer function. The transfer function and the Z transform of the impulse response are related. As you can see, they are equivalent in the regions of convergence and are both commonly represented using the symbol H. The rest of this video, I'm just going to outline this relationship in some more detail. To start, we need to appreciate the properties of time shifting and linearity associated with the Z transform. And it's important to note that these properties are only valid when the resulting series converge. You can find a thorough proof of these properties elsewhere, but I'm going to validate the first one by way of practical example, as it tends to cause some slight confusion. Let's begin with the signal X of N, in which X of 0 is 3, x of 1 is minus 1, x of 2 is 2, and x of 3 is 1. And all other samples in the signal are 0. And it doesn't really matter what these non-zero values are, or how many non-zero values there are. Now let's define a signal Wn, which is equal to x of n minus 2. Evaluating Wn for n equal to 0 up to 8 gives the following sequence. 0, 0, 3, minus 1, 2, 1, 0, 0. We can see from the plot that this signal Wn is a delayed version of x of n, where the delay is two samples in duration. Taking the z transform of x of n gives the result of 3 minus z to the power of minus 1, plus 2 by z to the power of minus 2, plus z to the power of minus 3. Taking the z transform of Wn then gives the result of 3 by z to the power of minus 2, minus z to the power of minus 3, plus 2 by z to the power of minus 4, plus z to the power of minus 5 which you'll appreciate is equivalent to x of z by z to the power of minus 2. We can use these properties of linearity and time shifting to analyse the difference equation of a system using the z transform. Let's take a practical example where the system is described by the following difference equation. Using the above z transform properties gives this result for y of z. Now, what we're really interested in is an expression for the z transform of h of n, which is the impulse response of a system. To get this, we can substitute x of n with the unit sample impulse in the above expressions, where the unit sample impulse is defined to have a value of 1 at sample 0 and 0 for all other samples. When x of n is a unit sample impulse, then x of z is simply a value of 1. Also, when x of n is an impulse, then the output y of n is the impulse response, h of n. So we can just change the variable y of z with h of z, so this becomes an equation for h of z. This equation is known as the system's transfer function, and we can determine the locations of poles and zeros by determining the roots of the polynomials associated with the numerator terms and the denominator terms of the expression to the right of the equation. It's important to note that this equation for h of z can only be considered a valid z transform of the system impulse response in the region of convergence, since the three properties of the z transform used to determine it are only valid for theories that converge. To highlight this point, I'm going to relabel h of z as htf of z. So htf of z should be equal to the z transform of the impulse response of the system in the region of convergence. Let's validate this with some practical calculations for z equal to minus 1, z equal to 0 0.6364 plus 0 0.6364j, and for 0 plus 0.5j. Notice how both h of z and htf of z arrive at the same value for values of z that lie in the region of convergence. Outside of this region, we get values from the transfer function that can, in some ways, be considered incorrect, yet visually I find these values appealing, as it helps to visualise how the location of poles and zeros influence the frequency response of a system. In the next video, I'll explain why the intersection of the surface of the magnitude of h of z with the unit circle is equivalent to the frequency response of a system.